Welcome back. In the last vlog, we talked about hiring a great attorney. So I hope you did some research and you were able to find someone that will be able to help you as you go through your small business buying experience. In this vlog, we're going to talk about bookkeeping and just how important a piece of buying a business and as you own the business that bookkeeping really is. So when I started looking at buying small businesses, whether I went directly to an owner or I found these businesses through a small business broker, they would usually just say, oh, okay, great. The owner's gonna send you some bank statements. Okay, great. So they send me anywhere from six months to 14 months of bank statements and they're just sort of like, have at it. And when I went to ask a lot of questions about these bank statements, you do have to remember that the small business broker is being paid by the seller. So they're gonna answer your questions, but it seems like they were just answering a more matter of fact and not in the level of depth or detail that I wanted them to be answered. So when you start questioning people about what kind of finances they have, you should be looking for not only bank statements, two years if you can get them, you should be looking for a P&L statement, profit and loss, a balance sheet, and hopefully this is all being done in some type of professional accounting software where the bank statements have been reconciled every month. That is a huge thing. Reconciled bank statements or else you're going to spend like I did probably a month reconciling these people's bank statements yourself to see what was coming in, what was going out, and did it all match up. So the bad part of, well I guess it was the good part of me finding businesses that didn't have great bank statements was that I sort of became a junior forensic accountant and I probably learned a lot, a lot more than I would have learned had it all been laid out for me. So it was a great learning experience in retrospect, but as you buy your business, I highly recommend some professional accounting software from day one. It's gonna help you so much and might be some more time, trouble, and effort than you wanna do, but is gonna pay off in the long run, just as you do your day-to-day -day books and you do your taxes. And if you wanna sell your business some point down the road, you're gonna get a much higher bang for the buck than if you don't have this. So remember another thing that these small business brokers do or that I saw them do is they hand you these bank statements with unreconciled bank statements and they say, oh, the seller would like to per, you know, sell this in, in two weeks. And usually at about the two week point was just when I was getting into the meat of figuring out where the dollars were coming from and where the dollars were going to. So I say this to say, do not let anybody pressure you into a timeline that you are not comfortable with. Because remember, as well as you're going through these bank statements, you could be negotiating a lease and a franchise development document and everybody's always like, come on, come on, chop, chop. Another thing you have to be very careful of when buying a small business is the owner will oftentimes say to you, and this happened on probably eight out of the 10 businesses I, I looked at, they'd say, well, we did $250,000 of gross revenue on the books and we did another 50,000 off the books. So therefore, I'm gonna charge you the multiple of those combined figures, not just a, a multiple of what was on the books. So, well, it might be true. Maybe he did 50 grand in off the books revenue, and that's great, good for him. That's between him and the IRS. My recommendation to you is you buy a multiple based on what can be proven to you. Otherwise, you're just buying air. So I don't know how you want to express that to the small business broker or the seller, but only buy what you can see and what you can prove. And also, if somebody has reconciled bank statements and they've kept great books, they might be eligible for an SBA loan, meaning that if you're the buyer and they've kept good records, you can get an SBA loan to purchase their business. And if you keep great records and books when you go to sell it, somebody could qualify for an SBA loan to buy your business. So there's really a high motivation, in my opinion, to keep great records and books. David Bryson, keeping it real. Please subscribe and I will see you on the next vlog.